Okay, safety off. And I'm gonna pull that trigger. Well, we wanted to see if you could take two urban women who had really no experience with guns um, or killing animals and uh, turn them into urban hunters. Well, not urban hunters, <laughs> urbanites who are hunters. Close I think you got it. Target to, to, to right. Where'd it go? To I right. became very interested in hunting, okay. which I'd never thought of before. I knew nothing about hunting. I have no background in it, no connection to it, but I started to think that it might be a really neat thing to do as an outdoors lover, and that it was an ethical way to eat meat. If you learn to walk like a squirrel, you can walk up on any animal in the woods, but you gotta walk, stop. Obviously with hunting, you want something somewhat hands-on, but there's nothing official in Illinois that you can do that's hands-on, so we had to find mentors who would take us out and loan us their guns and set up shooting areas for us. This is the safety. Safety's off, safety's on. When the safety's on, you can't fire a gun. When the safety's off... I had never, I had shot a gun once for a story, many years ago, briefly. That was it. But you guys will not be here. They're not going to be here. I'm talking about you. I'm afraid to no, hit No, they're not going to be here. Okay. This is your and beyond that, guns were very scary to me. Okay. It has a video arcade feel to it. Um, and it's frustrating because you want to hit it. And, you wanna and um, I'm not a naturally athletic person. I later found out that the people who pick this up easily are people with good hand-eye coordination. Pull! It really is one of these um, these things that are passed on between friends or generations. And so if you're an outsider, you really have to get in on the inside to get someone to want to share this with you if your dad or your uncle or your mom are not hunters. The, uh, down low is the heart and the lungs are up above. And behind that is the gut and you don't want to get into the gut. You want you're shooting it in a way to kill it immediately. I'll let you load it before I get in my chair. You're not there to make an animal suffer. Okay, push the cartridge up. There you go, springs. There's a spring in there. What I didn't understand about hunting going in was that about 99% of it is just being cold. Terrain that's getting topped off. That's a little one. Most of the time, nothing happened. Absolutely, I mean, the big excitement would be, oh my gosh, there's a squirrel, you know? Because there was this really intense emphasis on safety, um, I wasn't concerned, but uh, obviously, yeah, and Barb can elaborate more, we did have a momentary slip up when something we absolutely did not expect happened. Monica and I went out on several days hunting on several different expeditions and never saw a deer most of the time. Then finally, in the afternoon of the last day that I went out shooting, um, a deer showed up in the brush, I squeezed the trigger and something hit me in the eye by not bracing the gun properly and putting my eye too close. I'd taken the full recoil in my eye from the scope. So you've seen, you said you recognized it as recoil. You've seen this. What did he call it? Something bite? Scope bite. Scope, scope bite. bite. Scope. My eye ended up bruised, black, um, blue, and I had to get six stitches. In the end, we did not ever actually kill an animal. The great part about this is that I did get some venison. Are you, are you on top of the skin or? Yeah. Did you start pulling? Mm -hmm. Because one of the members of our hunting party um, actually got three deer. And so he said he would donate some of that to us as long as I butchered it. This just, yeah, no, it's just blood? some, a uh, little bit of blood that's underneath the skin. Oh, okay. So, so two weeks you, after we hunted, um, we came back and the deer had been uh, aging in, in a locker. So I, I went I with um, chef and hunter Rick Gollinger. Go ahead. Nice. And he and I, in about the course of five hours, broke down three yeah, deer, and at first I was very squeamish. There we go. I didn't want to touch this animal, it was so cute, and 
And then I, I really, I kind of got in, not got into the act of tearing apart an animal, but it's very hard physical work, and, and you feel like you have something at the end of the day, and that there were, you know, millions of people for thousands of years who had done the same act in order to get their meal. Yeah, it, it, it probably seems a little gruesome to look at, but it really was much more about being useful and taking an animal and not having someone else do it for you from its somewhat natural state to something you can cook and eat. And it's very delicious. What I found is that it was the amazing outdoors experience people told us about. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I've got some more. All these hunters kept saying, it's not about killing the animal. It's not about that. It's about being out there. We were out there once when this huge flock of blackbirds flew through and it looked in the trees above us and it looked like a scene out of the birds. I'd never seen so many in one spot. Oh, aggressive. Good. <laughs> I want to go back because I do believe, after looking at this so carefully, that it is the most sustainable way to get meat. And I've been on this sort of quest for several years now, trying to come to terms with what it means to take another life in order to enjoy a meal. And I wanted to find the way that the animal has to suffer least, the environment has to suffer the least, our economy doesn't have to put billions in subsidies to grow cheap feed for it. And I feel terrible about taking the life of an animal. I want to say that. But I really feel like if I'm going to eat meat, this is how I'd feel most comfortable eating meat.